Hello and welcome to the fifth video in this series making our simple floppy robin using Cocos DDX for Android. Last video then we hit the dizzy heights of if I just try and run the application here I believe of having a robin in the middle of the screen which is all well and good. In this video I want to get as far as actually be able to click on it and make it jump. So it could be a bit of a longer video than normal but it's best to uh, get all of this completed. So if we think about how we're going to do this, I'm just going to run the application again. So I'll explain what we're going to do and then program it because it all has to really go in in one go. We know that we can detect touches already on the screen. And what we want to be able to do is when our touch hits the robin, we want the robin to move upwards with an initial speed. Now because of the effect of gravity, that speed like when you throw a ball gets less and less and then the robin comes back down again. And what we want to happen is, just for now, is when the robin goes off the bottom of the screen, it gets reset to the middle, waiting to be tapped again. And when it's tapped, then again, we get the situation where we have to keep tapping it to keep it in the air, otherwise it falls off the bottom of the screen. So if we think about how we might do that, the first problem we've got to solve is, how does the robin know whether it needs to just fall under the effects of gravity or ignore gravity? Well, that's why we've added uh, into our constants and why we go we've added the state variable into the Robin class because it's going to have two states. One is moving and one is stopped. When it's in a state of stopped, we'll click on it, which will change its state to moving. And then when it's moving, it'll have an update function called. And this update function will say if it's in a state moving, then update its position depending on its current speed and the effects of gravity. And then whilst it's moving, if we ever click on it, it will reset its speed to this initial speed. So hopefully that makes some sort of sense. It's actually quite simple when you see it in practice. The next thing is, is how do we work out how it um, makes this sort of jump upwards and then slow down and fall to the ground? Well, we're going to use something here if you remember back to school from maths, but it's not very complicated. If you go onto Wikipedia, there's a section called equations of motion. And I'm sure you remember from school the SUVAT equations, which are these S equals UT plus half AT squared and all this kind of stuff. And we'll be using, oh, they're not text, we'll be using these two here. So what we'll do is we'll be calling a function every 60, 60 times a second. You remember the target frame rate is 60 times a second or near enough. And when this function's called, we get given a delta time since the last time that function was called. So what we can do is if we know the speed, u, that the bird is travelling, doesn't matter whether it's a positive, which means upwards, or a negative speed, we know the time, we know the acceleration because that's gravity in a downward direction, or our gravity, which we'll set, and the time again, squared, we know. Which means we can work out the distance that the bird has travelled since the last update. And all we then need to do is update that distance. The next thing we need to do is we need to work out the new speed the bird is travelling. For that we just need to get have the current speed, the u, plus the acceleration, the gravity, again multiplied by the delta time. So we can use these two equations here to quite easily update the position of the bird. And actually when you apply these it looks pretty darn realistic. Whether it's any good or not is another question and we'll see in later videos. So that's what we're going to be implementing now you've had some preamble. So I'll get started. Right, the first thing we need to do is inside here, inside constants.h, we'll define some new uh, constants. Uh, we'll call the first one k state, uh, oops, not l, k, and we'll call it uh, robin state, and we'll say stopped. So this is when the robin is stopped, and the next one we'll define, I'll just save some time by copying and pasting, we'll call robin state moving, and we'll set this to a one. So that's the first sort of major thing we need to we need to cover. The next thing we need to do is we need to define our gravity. And we're going to define our gravity as minus 500. And you may be saying, hey, what? Don't understand. I fiddled around with this before this video to see what kind of values make some kind of sense at all. And it turns out that on our screen size, on our number of pixels, minus 500 is fine and dandy, so that's what we'll use. The next thing we need to do then is go into our Robin and start fleshing out these functions a little bit. So first of all we'll look at the, re the reset. So when we reset 
it's when the robin has fallen off the bottom of the screen or is being set to the middle of the screen and not to be moving. So we'll set the state equal to, and I've just realized that I haven't actually included the constants here. So we'll set our state equal to k robin state stopped. Okay, because in the update nothing's going to happen whilst the robin is stopped. And the next thing we want to do is set, because it's reset, its speed, current speed, to the start speed, which will be the value that's inside, if I can find the file, robin.h is the 300 here. In here, to get state, we simply return the state of the robin, and to set state, we simply set our state equal to st. And last but not least, inside the set start speed, our speed y is now going to be equal to the start speed y, which is the 300 in a positive direction, so up the screen. Inside the create function here, we need to reset our robin when it's been created, so its start speed is set correctly and its state stopped is set correctly. And that's actually all we need to do for all of these functions outside the update robin. And the slightly more complicated part happens inside the update robin here. So what I'll do is in the comments here, I'll just remind you of the distance equals uh, ut, so the speed, multiplied by the delta time plus a half times the acceleration times dt times d. T. So that's exactly what we'll be writing in code to get the distance it's moved. To get the new speed, we will do u, so the, uh, the current speed, plus the acceleration multiplied by the time. So when update is called then on the robin, first of all we need to ask a question. We need to say if the current state is equal to k robin state moving, then we'll change its position because if it's not moving then it's obviously sitting in the middle of the screen waiting for the game to start. So we'll say float and the distance because we want to work out the distance and we want to say float and new speed because we want to work out, as I've already said, the new speed. And critical here of course is everything has to be in a float because the time comes in float, it comes in seconds, so 1.0 is a second, and we'll be working with 60 updates a second in amounts a lot smaller than 1, so an integer. So you have to make sure these things are in floats, and indeed, robin.h, this is why the speed y is a float here. Otherwise you get very nasty problems and the equations don't work, speaking from experience. So the first thing to work out then is the distance. And we're simply going to do exactly what I've written above in the commented section. So speed times the delta time plus 0.5 multiplied by our gravity, multiplied by delta time, multiplied by delta time. And that's all we need to do to get the distance that we are moving in the y direction. And because downwards is a minus speed or acceleration, and upwards is a positive or a negative, these will be this this distance will update correctly in an upwards or downward direction, which you'll see. The next thing we need to do then is work out our new speed. And again, that's equal to our speed y plus our gravity times our delta time. And what you can see there is with each little bit of time, we'll be actually, because gravity is negative, subtracting from our speed y. So speed y will start at this 300 upwards, but will reduce and reduce and reduce, reduce until it's negative and gradually get bigger negative. So you can see how we end up doing an upwards slowing down and then a downwards speeding up. Now that we've done that, we simply need to set the new position. So we can say this, and we have a set position y because we've uh, subclassed from a CC sprite. And we want to set that new position to the current y position plus the distance. Remember, the distance will be positive and negative based on the equation here, so we don't need to worry about that. I do need to worry about that. And then we also need to be careful to update our speed to the new speed. So we'll say that's equal to the new speed. And that's all there is to it, believe it or not. So we'll just save that here, and we've completely uh, done all of the, the code that we need for our Robin.
So now we need to go back into the Hello World scene and we need to think about how we're going to run all this from our Hello World scene. First thing I'm going to do is go into Hello World scene.h and I'm going to do a bit of a hack here for now, it'll probably come out later, but I'm going to make a, a variable called middle y. And this will simply store the middle y point in the middle of our screen so that we don't have to calculate it asking the CC director for the visible size every time we run an update. And now what we need is we need a function that will be called 60 times a second. So we'll call this game update with a float delta time. What we need to do, however, is to be able to call this game update. And I'll just put this game update here, like so, and float delta time. And that's completely wrong. OK. And what we need to do, as I said, is to be able to call this as often as possible with a target of 60 times a second. Well, Cocos 2D um, X framework, amongst a hundred other things provide something very very handy which is called a scheduling and all you need to do is you need to say this schedule and then you want a schedule selector and now what you do is you're scheduling a selector which is our hello world game update and this will now schedule this function to be called as often as possible uh, if you look into schedule, there's also, there are also things like you can specify the time interval for, this, for the function. You can also call schedule once with a delay, so you call a function once after a certain delay. There are lots and lots of variations, but this one will call game update as often as possible. So we've got a game update loop then running now, constantly. And the other thing we need to do, of course, before I forget, is set our middle y here. So this will be equal to our visible size dot height divided by 2. And now we've done this, we can look at how we're going to update our ball, sorry, our ball, our robin inside here. So what we can do is we can say that if our robin get position y is less than zero, remember zero is the bottom of the screen, then our robin has fallen off the bottom of the screen and we need to reset him back to the middle. So what we do is we say robin and set position and we use our middle y so back to the middle of the screen and also we need to reset our robin so he's not moving anymore and his speed is reset so if he falls off the bottom of the screen then he goes back to the middle of the screen and sits there awaiting further instruction otherwise we simply call the update with the delta time for the robin and that's actually all we need to do so that's the complete update section to update our robin and handles the case where he's reset to the middle of the screen. Last but not least is the actual tapping of our robin. Now when you think about when we tap our robin, we need him to do a jump upwards. Well all we're going to be doing there is simply resetting the speed, whatever it is, even if it's negative downwards, back to the original start speed. Start speed. So we've got the location in pixel coordinates of our tap. So we now need to say if our robin and we can say get is it bound oh no it's just bounding box if the bounding box this is the rectangle that bounds defines the boundaries of the robin uh, as a rectangle and then we can say dot contains point and then our tap so if you make a square around our robin or a rectangle does it contain the point of our tap and if it does contain the point of our tap then we have to do something so we have to say first of all if our robin and get state equals k robin state stopped so he was sitting waiting for his first tap then we can now set his state to moving and what will happen is because we know when he's in the stop state his velocity will be set to the start velocity then we just need to set his state to k robin state moving and now the update function for the robin will execute all, all the code inside there because the state is now moving and we don't need to do anything else. Otherwise however we've tapped the robin whilst he was on the move so that means we need to get our robin and we need to set start speed again so we need to set the speed again into an upward direction.
That's quite a lot of code and stuff in there. I'll just build that and make sure I haven't made any errors. But it's actually really fairly simple stuff. And believe it or not, we should be in already at the stage where by tapping our little Robin, he'll move up and down, hopefully, relatively realistically. So I've got the screen here, and if I tap him, you can see he moves, and if I keep tapping him with the mouse, then he's moving up and down, and I've missed him, and he's reset now to the middle of the screen. And again, bouncing, and things don't really, for a first run, look that bad, to be honest, considering there's not much uh, fine-tuning inside it, and things seem to be running pretty well. Okay, so come quite far in five videos uh, with the application. The only thing I would say is I haven't tested this on the iPad or an iPhone screen yet. I'm going to do that probably sometime this evening if I get some time to see whether this method is indeed viable or not for the way things are being done. It doesn't seem to be a big drop in frame rate or anything when I'm uh, doing the touches like this. Uh, and yes, that's it then for this video. What we can start doing next time is maybe move the Robin over a bit and now start looking at how the obstacles appear moving on the screen that we try to avoid. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.